We've like to start the second half of the symposium. How can we achieve horizontal and interactive learning in the new normal education? We have three members now. And in this discussion as well, your questions and comments are welcome. By 3.30, using Q and A section, please give us your questions and comments. Let me introduce today's members of the panel. Professor Suzuki Kan, Professor at the University of Tokyo and Keio University. And University of Tokyo Professor Kita Yuto, Yuto Kitamura, Professor. From Nagoya University Graduate School, Professor Shoko Yamada. Professor Suzuki, Professor Kitamura, Professor Yamada are also the members of the Expert, Expert Council for Edu Board, Nippon, who give us advice and guidance in various ways to us. I would like to pass the microphone to Professor Kitamura. The floor is here. Thank you very much. So we would like to start the panel discussion. Uh, before we go into the discussion, at the first part of this symposium, uh, there were uh, three uh, presentations uh, that were uh, shared with us regarding the projects. And I would like to mention about that. What I felt from this is that each uh, country's uh, context and the needs have been uh, thoroughly uh, picked up and thought of what they can do and think together with the counterparts and conducting uh, the project. And they are realizing what uh, Egyport uh, has been putting importance on till now. Uh, within the con and there were some themes related to ESG and sustainable society is not just an international target to achieve it's something that we ourselves uh, build up and it's uh, something uh, that uh, brings comes out uh, from uh, the uh, local day-to-day -day activities I felt that very strongly uh, from the uh, presentations it's a uh, very brief, but I would like to reflect on uh, the uh, Kagawa University's projects in Cambodia. In Cambodia, when you go to the rural areas, uh, school health or hygiene education uh, does not exist, and uh, they have created in those areas and uh, had uh, built up a very uh, close relationship with the local partners, and within that situation, the understanding of the history of Cambodia and the mutual respect is something I strongly felt uh, from your project. And I thought it was a very good project. And as Professor Shimizu mentioned at the end, of uh, your students that are studying abroad becoming the bridges of education. When we think about the education exchange between Japan and other countries, well, unfortunately, right now, due to uh, COVID, uh, we're not able to realize it uh, very much at this point, and uh, probably from next fiscal year, the situation will change. But this part of becoming the bridge is uh, very important, is what I have felt. Uh, next is the uh, activities of Color Path in Malawi. Uh, the uh, students' uh, active, uh, proactive uh, participation and uh, participating as an individual uh, is what I felt very strongly. It's a very bright fear and being acceptable to everything around them. Uh, creating such an environment is uh, the result of providing appropriate support to the uh, teachers and the ICT support or online. That is a tool, and it's only a it's only a tool. And because Yoshikawa-san is well aware of that, or uh, the project members uh, feel as such uh, that such good exchange uh, was uh, born amongst the students. And uh, lastly, the uh, Kumon style education uh, in the context of Abu Dhabi and in the context of the school within Abu Dhabi and also in the context of the teachers of the schools in Abu Dhabi. Uh, they are very uh, well, thoroughly aware of the situation and think of how Kumon method education can contribute to the situation. 
uh, was the base of the project and it was conducted well. So it's not just improving the academic abilities, but also thought of the incognitive uh, skills. Uh, they're thinking of what is required or uh, the needs of the children in the current Abu Dhabi. And uh, in relationship to ESG, it's not just inside out, but also outside in is uh, what is uh, often mentioned. When corporations uh, conduct ESG related initiatives, it's inside out, meaning that the technology or knowledge that the companies uh, have utilize them to uh, resolve societal issues outside of them. But not just that, but what is what exists outside, bring that inside in. And even though uh, one will not be able to respond to all of that, but to try to be involved in something uh, that uh, one has not been doing till now, meaning start from outside in uh, type of initiatives is what I saw in the Kumon's project. So as you can see in these uh, projects, I strongly uh, feel uh, that Edgeport uh, projects are moving strongly forward. So keeping these uh, projects in mind within the uh, current uh, panel discussion, we'd like to discuss about the situation, the current uh, learning, how exchanges uh, should be done, and the horizontal and interactive uh, learning in the new normal that Edgeport is disseminating. How is that going to be moving forward? I would like to uh, discuss that uh, with uh, Professor Kitamura and Professor Yamada, though the time is short. Uh, excuse me, Professor Suzuki and Professor Yamada. Sorry, I just spoke of uh, what my thoughts. I would like to hear from the other uh, two uh, professors after uh, they have uh, listened to the uh, three presentations at the start. What do you think? Professor Suzuki first, thank you. I'm Suzuki. Three presentations and their practices. I was indeed impressed by their activities as I listened to them. In this term, horizontal and interactive learning, that's the focal point in our activities. In all the three cases, already you have taught us many things in your execution or practices. First, children, students, or pupils. At that dimension, for instance, Cambodia, you talked about plastics, I mean, SDGs, as Professor Kitamura's perspective, as you already mentioned, in those cases, children were able to experience that in that particular project. So SDGs are not something distant. You, it, those are tactile, you know, almost to feel them as an issue. For children to have those such an understanding, it's important, and foreign language. Both groups of students speak English as a foreign language for international communication. Uh, I would second it to Yamaguchi uh, Pre Prefectural uh, Council. So I know the Shuna City, their junior high school students and the elementary school pupils were given such an opportunity. That's it. Also, not just at the level of children and students level and the dimension of faculty teachers or the board of education the policy makers in edu education again there are so many learning lessons from them for instance first learn about genocide that comment about cambodia that that's very important In terms of communication with Cambodia or collaboration with Cambodia, learning about genocide, of course, it's important, but with any community or with any society, they have their own history, they have their past. And on the part of teachers, they have to know them thoroughly and then interact with that particular community. We call this community school here in Japan. 
there are about 10,000 such schools and try to increase it to 30,000. And the, there was an amendment to laws and regulations to obligate the building of those schools. But that kind of importance was once again taught by this particular example. The introduction of ICT, for what purpose? That um, teachers' trainings and at various schools, I've been giving such lectures. ICT is a tool. So unilateral learning, centering on lectures, if you look at the new course of curriculum, 2024, the, the, from the elementary school, and in April this year, it starts at high school, and 2030 OECD, they discuss agency. So students should have agency, they should be proactive in learning, collaboratively learning things. That attitude needs to be obtained that's really about lifetime lifelong learning independent self-governing self-sustaining self-governing and independent learner in terms of fostering such learners it's important in the case of malawi they had no other choice but to put teach students at the center but in the industrialized society, you, it's teaching one way. Africa is a very in, interesting continent, next generation. Just if you look at the cellular phones, they don't even really have the fixed phones, but they start using mobile phones. So new schools, new learning, as we look at those things, in learning learning from each other that that is important similarly the uae to uae i've been there several times working almost like a consultant for the educational agency so once again this is is great but and there was a high turnover of the um, student uh, teachers and they teachers don't speak that native language and so you are taught from foreigners and that foreigners keep changing as teachers uh, I'm, of course i'm pretty sure there are good things and bad things good aspects bad aspects it's different from japan japan in the case of japan they speak the ch ch children's mother tongue based based mostly on the lifetime employment but once again, educational policies, school management, those of you who take Japanese style for granted, but in a way, it's kind of a precious, uh, it's it's pretty rare that we have this kind of a system and uh, I can understand difficulties that UAE feels and what we take for granted in Japan, it really should not be taken for granted. So in terms of understanding that, globally, the education is really at a crisp road, 2030, it was 2040, the education image, education, teachers' image, or the vision for schools, they're going to have a major shift. Everybody is really going through trials and errors. 21st type of education, or 150 years that we started from 1889 in Meiji, and we are hit by COVID-19. And now we are really in the major transition period for the first time in several decades. So many suggestions have been made, and we also need to think from scratch. And I received so much stimulus, stimuli, and even in that sense, this, these projects have been really significant and fr fruitful. Each project is enjoying such success, that's great. They have kind of a ripple effect repercussions for the Japan's educational community, to teachers and educational policy makers. 
they have ripple effects that's also significant thank you uh, thank you very much oecd and internationally uh, you have been involved in uh, various activities, so you have the uh, broad horizontal range of uh, perspectives and including prospects uh, for the future uh, was in your comments. Uh, thank you very much for such comments. So, Professor Yamada, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Well, each one of the uh, three projects, I will touch upon each one of them, but also uh, touch upon all three of them uh, together. Uh, within the participants uh, today, um, there are many uh, companies or uh, school teachers, is uh, what I have heard beforehand. And from those uh, perspectives, I'm sure that there are many people who think so. Well, at the end, what does sustainability mean? ESG has uh, 17 targets. So if we do what, uh, what it will mean? Uh, that we have done something related to SDGs. And I think that's a very simple question that uh, comes up into everybody's mind. But when we look at this from the educational uh, context, the Japan's uh, international stance has an important meaning. Sustainability, depending on the situation, when the environment changes, how should one behave how one reacts to that change is uh, going to contribute uh, to the uh, situation. Being able to make that decision on one's own and lifelong learning to consistent, uh, continuously improving one's will is uh, related to what is the sustainability, what is productivity within the times where environment is uh, changing all the time. And uh, currently, in holistic human development is what is asked uh, for us. Uh, therefore, in Kumon, the in non-cognitive uh, skills has to be developed is uh, what was said. What that's coming from is that instead of just learning from a textbook, efficiently being able to output it uh, is not uh, any more sufficient. And so within that, the non-cognitive skills are included and uh, the uh, knowledge and the physical ability and virtue is important. So school health education or hygiene uh, education is uh, related to that. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the venue called a school is uh, considered to be a place uh, where that children are nurtured in a holistic way, meaning that it's not just a place to receive uh, the education. So including uh, providing the non-cognitive skills and others uh, is also included. And uh, looking at the reports provided by Ejipur till now, I do believe that that is one of the characteristics of the uh, support that is uh, provided from uh, Japan. And so in that sense, I believe that these elements can be more uh, communicated or disseminated to overseas. And so having a sustainable conduct, even though you just learn it, it also requires a learning within the experimental context. So in that sense, uh, Color Bath and also Kagawa University as well, having the children or uh, students at the center and uh, speaking to the students overseas in English and uh, proposing an issue to discuss from one's own that is an experiment uh, that is uh, linking uh, to the students or children's uh, daily life, and that is going to lead to a holistic uh, education. So I think that each project uh, was uh, conducting a quite an effective uh, education. I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. I think you have suggested several key important keywords that school is where the children are taught in a comprehensive manner so the learning in the context the holistic 
how to nurture people. And Japan has been really aiming to realize this, and there has been accumulation of efforts, all important points. So in this way, as the two of you mentioned, regarding Edubot, utilizing what Japan has accumulated so far, and with partner countries and from partner communities, learning so many things, and including the repercussions to Japan, the edge board projects have developed, but now edge board is edge board 2.0. There's really a lot of room for more development. So that room for more development in the more or less in a symbolic manner here, horizontal and interactive learning, it needs to be expanded even more. For instance, amongst different projects, there should be more concerted efforts, a more deeper collaboration to, among countries to expanding this horizontal and interactive learning more. Africa and Middle East are the scope of the projects, but still it's centered on Asia. You actually realize in Professor Yamada in Africa to other regions in the world as we seek to develop our activities, what are the things we should keep in our mind? So, Professor Suzuki? Yes. Well, Japan is a realizing Giga Schools in an accelerated manner ahead of a plan, and the tablets are distributed to schools, one per each uh, student. And within fiscal year 2022, uh, the high schools will also receive that. And the hardware and the uh, network environment has uh, developed all at once. And as a result of this, with uh, various uh, partners, uh, this uh, horizontal and interactive uh, learning opportunities to be realized. The conditions are all set now in line with Edgeport 2.0. With various parties or opportunities, I think it is uh, just to start uh, implementing and uh, realizing, inducting uh, horizontal and interactive uh, learning in a continuous manner. And if you do so, there will be uh, learning, more learning or noticing things that uh, more than what we have expected will happen. So the relevant people, and even for us, we feel that. The uh, Japanese uh, educational field or the forefront of Japanese education needs to proactively do that too. And I believe that, I hope that these are projects uh, will become a project that will actually give us the necessary last, last push. And uh, I think uh, Color Bath is uh, leading us in that, or universities uh, the, uh, lead uh, the uh, effort, or private companies are doing so, with uh, just uh, the government side or the Ministry of Education. It may not move that much uh, forward, but having a collaboration or having a liaison amongst us and moving things forward uh, was uh, very well expressed from all these uh, projects. And I have uh, learned about that. And I thought that was very good. I just forgot to mention one thing. In Japan, the higher education or the public education uh, with the co communication with the uh, community, the community is uh, progressing but the know-how accumulated in the private sector companies or utilizing that, uh, so something like in a PPP uh, format, 
uh, we in Japan tend to be not very good at that. The for public education, uh, the uh, private sector is uh, taking too much of a distance from my perspective. Well, that was the past. And there's still the inertia uh, that still exists uh, in that relationship. And I think the Japanese educational industry being able to provide a high uh, quality contents in, um, in the mother language. I think we are a very fortunate country to have such environment. So I think that this uh, needs to be utilized more. So at Eduport uh, type of a venue, not just exporting it, but to having it imported uh, to us, I think can be done uh, too. Listening to Sugawa's presentation, I just thought, why can it be realized in Abu Dhabi, but not here in Japan? So in that sense, cross border is not just crossing the national borders, but the borders of each educational entity or institution, having that in a cross border relationship is also important. Thank you. So, so far, the border lines have been drawn in various places in, in, in terms of the government, including that silo government, how to go over that, go beyond that. Trying to change that within Japan, it can be difficult, but by having partnership with overseas entities, parties, then that can, that can be done. So first, give it a try. If you look at the positioning of Edgeport, it's pretty unique. Initially, regarding this Edgeport ideas, when I had a discussion with the next, I mean, is it okay to do this without giving the fund, giving the money? But uh, actually, so many people said if you could serve as a contact to liaison office that matters even more it's really not a matter of funding as you said private sector is endowed with a lot of resources so i i used to think that the money has to come first but that's not the case it's to utilize this edge board characteristics first to try that's that's really important thank you yeah. yamada sensei Thank you very much. It uh, may be continuing of uh, what was said right now. Uh, within this uh, COVID pandemic uh, situation, outside the school, meaning that the interaction between the student and teacher within the classroom, not that, but how uh, the issue was, how are we going to continue that classroom relationship outside the classroom? Up till now, uh, educational disparity, when we talk about that, we think in the units of country or schools or institutions, we had the image of disparity uh, within each structural unit. But uh, recently, we see that becoming an individual basis recently. And in that part, the private sector educational industries experience is going to be effective meaning that there'll be people uh, that will come out that has access to all that. But at the same time, this educational disparity is uh, starting to become the disparity amongst individuals, between individuals, meaning that the ICT, information technology, these, uh, there are people who are included in that infrastructure and those that are not. So this is something, a uh, disparity, horizontal, disparity that goes beyond country borders. So within the private uh, sector's uh, potential in Japan is that there are many people online, uh, meaning outside the school, uh, there's a possibility that is seeked uh, for learning outside schools. And that is not just the uh, medium or high income uh, people, but 
leapfrog in the developing countries because they didn't have school, the education level is low, or they don't have any means, so they're in poverty uh, situations. So if you want a phone, you need a landline, then move on to mobile phone. This is what Professor Suzuki was uh, saying. Something that was thought to uh, grow or develop in stages, but now it's a leap frog. They jump that. And so the medium and or low or medium uh, income families has a possibility that could become a higher income uh, family. But this leapfrog, though those who cannot go on this uh, leapfrog trend, how can we uh, utilize this uh, know-how that has been accumulated in the Japanese uh, private uh, sector know-how? If we think about that, I think uh, we'll be able to provide a support uh, that will be in line with discussion points that have been mentioned right now. Thank you so much. Professor Yamada, you made several important points. At the institutional level, there is disparity, but as there's individualization of learning, this is perhaps could lead to disparity amongst the different individuals. And future learning, if you look at the course of uh, studying, this is the, the, you have the centering on the agency, the in-depth learning, but there even household environment, societal environment, such learning is directly impacted by this because it's not just based on textbooks. So individual to individual disparity that is widening, how best we can overcome them. But then collaboration with the private sector, it comes in. Speaking of disparity, private sector tends to actually widen the gap. That critical pers perspective exists. I think that's important too, but at the same time, by utilizing the private sector well, how to overcome that gap, that perspective should not be forgotten. Just some su supplementary comment. May I add? For the uh, private sector uh, company, providing aid to the uh, developing uh, nations uh, was uh, like the uh, core thing to do within a CSR. But um, from now onwards, when these private companies go overseas, how uh, include multi layers in their uh, initiative how can they include that is going to lead to uh, their business so i think that's one perspective uh, that can be taken up i wish i could ask you more questions but we received several questions i cannot share with you all of the questions but let me share with you some of the questions so perhaps from those if you could select one or two questions and share with us your comments let me pick up several questions how are you actually implementing the education in new normal and how will the vocational education sector move forward during the covid 19 epidemic probably from a foreign person and also the what does the curriculum reform change in japan what once in 10 years and the roles played by sports and PE education can be difficult in developing countries. How do you do the PE lesson to a great number of students? And also, we, I think it's basically wrong to try to export to Japan to excellent education under the program. The whole institution approach using that exogenic system reform and then trying to cooperate and coordinate the other countries in the context as an R&D type, like Axon Research. With that, you should actually build the framework. I think it's a criticism. It's not that we are trying to export to Japan's excellent educational system and program. That's what we have been saying from 1.0, but I think that seems to be the impression. So, all institution, school as a whole, and collaborating with the local community, having a system by sharing that together with partners. 
we should be engaged in those activities. I think that's really what this person is driving at or what this person has pointed out. And Japan's thorough education and support is excellent. The ICT Times education using remote and visual types and utilizing such cutting edge technology. And also I'm really interested in, in the selective classes at an earliest possible time. Perhaps if you could address some of those questions, please. Well, as Professor Akitamura mentioned right now, uh, having a whole institution approach from Ejiport 1.0 and reflecting on 1.0 towards a 2.0 within the discussions of that. Uh, this is something that was uh, once again uh, confirmed and within that context, uh, the keywords of uh, horizontal and interactive uh, came out. This is uh, something that we need to uh, continue to always uh, confirm upon. Having said that, I myself, having said that, think that uh, learning has uh, become on an individual basis now. And so it's important of what one's going to learn, but with whom is uh, extremely important also. Because having uh, the people gathering uh, that have the same background, as one, not that, but learn with uh, various uh, type of people and become a classroom of friends is uh, going to be very important. Uh, meaning that the children around the world having various uh, different backgrounds or children having different backgrounds, uh, living in uh, one area, using the IT technology and learn together is extremely different, uh, di extremely important to create the next page of the uh, future. Uh, the Ukrainian child, Russian child, Japanese child, or European child from uh, the childhood uh, learning together, uh, sports, playing sports as well, uh, being exposed to arts and culture, whatever it is. I this is the element that is going to become extremely important of the next generation of education. Uh, learning, uh, if the children learn together, I think these children will not support uh, the various international conflicts occurring uh, in the world right now. Uh, therefore, Egyport, I hope that will become one of the initiatives that, that will realize uh, such a thing. And uh, what uh, Professor Yamada said very imp is very important. And uh, what also Professor Kitamura said, given what Professor Yamada said, meaning that inclusion is important too. I have a long experience in the government and the uh, reallocation by the government uh, should be functional. However, this is something that has been pointed out by OECD, this uh, democracy, the media sensationalism within that environment, uh, the original liberalism being uh, realized is extremely important for the government. However, uh, that uh, type of responsibility uh, thinking of the uh, current populism is uh, not uh, supported nowadays. Just looking at uh, the behavior of uh, former President Trump, you will know what I'm trying to say. I uh, teach public philosophy the at grips. So I'm not uh, going to explain what that is in detail. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that social innovation for inclusion or social business model creation for inclusion is something that all stakeholders should be involved in, meaning not, not say that this should be done by the government or by OECD alone, but instead uh, create a platform that will build up such a thing. If I may share just one example, there is a David, Mr. David Grin. He has uh, conducted catalysts 
cat cataract uh, surgery to about 10,000 uh, patients, and he's a social innovator. And in, uh, he conducts the surgery in India and Southeast Asia. Till now, uh, through ODA, uh, they provide medical assistance. It didn't go very well, but he said that to half of the uh, patients will give a very uh, country uh, level cataract uh, surgery free of charge and to about 30 percent i will charge half of the cost and the uh, top 20 percent patients uh, will charge additional fee uh, for surgery so even in the same type of business reallocation is uh, conducted and the uh, case data gathered from various places will be utilized for the development of the next new product. And even with that, it is generating value. Therefore, uh, overall technology and, and evolution is occurring and while that is occurring in an inclusive manner is delivered to those who need that. So Mr. Uh, David uh, Green is uh, doing such a thing. So it's government who's doing such a thing. It's a new type of uh, social entrepreneurs who are doing this. So meaning that uh, the private sector companies are providing tremendous support in such efforts, not the government. And the cataract uh, surgery, re uh, the equipment, and uh, devices are required for that surgery, the cost itself uh, is being reduced. So it's uh, beneficial to in all angles. So the issue that has been pointed out by Professor Yamada, it's not that I'm saying, it's not uh, that uh, continuing to say that as an issue is not going to solve anything. So Japan or the government, is the ODA budget going to increase? Well, with the JICA people are maximizing their limited budget, but for each a country is experiencing a financial deficit, especially in the developing uh, country. So the development uh, aid of the 21st century, continuing that is uh, going to be difficult. So creating a, uh, bridge infrastructure or roads uh, separate from this type of uh, infra, uh, hardware assistance, the software assistance, such as education or human services. And uh, services uh, or this uh, software part that uh, knowledge is also important. Create Creating uh, such new type of assistance and uh, the taking on the new type of uh, challenge in terms of uh, governance, I think can be realized with our new uh, colleagues. And I think all the stakeholders from uh, various countries gathering as one, I hope uh, that we can actually take on this challenge of realizing such thing. Thank you so much. That was a very strong message, Professor Yamada. I think it's limited, it's just one thing. I think it is really about the human resource development, yeah, in, about the, what was the impact on the vocational education system. It holds true for the education as a whole, but vocational training, it really emphasizes the practices. So sh sharing process, Education without sharing process that's conducted. I mean, as long as you could give an answer at the test or you submit something to the professor, your teacher, is that correct or not correct? That much is visible, but the process to reach that, that's not visible. So the education processes, especially in the vocational training, I mean, you have to do it hands on and then you know that you can do it or you cannot do it. So you really have to be able to do it. You are taught and then you do it without such relations learning technology. When you actually have to work, to what extent that be significant in the vocational training, that's telling, but in education as a whole. So there is a problem of not sharing processes. I think we it has been really highlighted. 
Uh, thank you very much. How learning should be, including uh, visualization of the uh, process. I would like to have a deeper discussion with all of you, but uh, we are running out of uh, time. So, uh, and it's uh, difficult to uh, wrap up uh, or summarize has been discussed, uh, but uh, listening uh, to uh, uh, Professor Suzuki listening to uh, Professor Yamada and what uh, environment, what is uh, going to be learned was uh, mentioned and each uh, society's uh, uh, context and uh, needs, uh, we need to look into that. Also, to begin with uh, Japan during uh, Second World War, in other uh, countries, uh, the, we have uh, conducted a public uh, education related to the imperiorship at uh, after that uh, we have uh, continued a dialogue after world war ii uh, and uh, sharing education with uh, everybody uh, to uh, promote a peace uh, in the world. And that is why uh, we, uh, Japan, uh, has been acting uh, these uh, assistance and aid uh, projects uh, through uh, various uh, public institutions such as JICA and others. Uh, but uh, learning uh, with various uh, people uh, together from childhood is something that I would like uh, something to start from Edgeport. And of course, uh, the, round, uh, the world surrounding us uh, right now, many things are happening. But given even under this environment, I really thought that I would like to once again uh, visit uh, these elements uh, that was uh, mentioned. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing with your deep thought insight uh, today.